rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. For those of you who chose to come to the mosque on Valentine's Day, thank you so much. And inshallah, you have good relationship with your husband, with your wife. You support each other, you respect each other, you love each other, and you help each other, inshallah ta'ala. So, by the way, uh, I was reading a survey today that the highest rate of divorce in America and in, in Europe and America takes place in the month of February because of Valentine's Day. Serious, this is not a joke. And especially on this day and tomorrow, tomorrow you will see a surge in divorce and separation because they have higher expectation of each other. She's waiting for, you know, for him to bring her today, you know, Flower, I wish only flower. It's, she needs jewelry. I wish only flowers. Yeah, so when he brings flowers, she gets angry at him because she was expecting jewelry, you know, diamond ring, whatever, or Lamborghini or, you know, these things. This is a true. This is a study done by the University of Arizona. So tomorrow you will wake up, mashallah, and you will see people going to the court because of Valentine's Day. Why? Because people focus on materialism, not ma'nawiyat, maddiyat. For them, marriage is about money, is about wealth, is about entertainment, physical entertainment. It's not about spiritual growth. It's not about hunna libasun lakum wa antum libasun lahun. Mutual respect, mutual protection, mutual development, it's not about that. It's all about money, it's all about materialism, this lower life. This is why they, it's easy for them to disrespect each other and distrust each other and put each other down and then they go to the court. And then they destroy the future of their children. When they are children, they don't think of the future of th those kids. They are committing crimes against their own children, but they don't realize. Why? Because they are overwhelmed with materialism, maddiyat. But someone who has ma'nawiyat in his heart and he looks forward for Allah, for the akhirah, he would not get involved in, in conflicts, material conflicts. Surah al rad today we will take ayah number four and ayah number five, inshallah. Sallu ala Muhammadin wa ali Muhammad. <coughs> أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أنبياء الله جميعا وعلى سيدهم وخاتمهم حبيب إله العالمين أبي القاسم المصطفى محمد وعلى أهل بيته الطيبين الطاهرين المعصومين الذين أذهب الله عنهم الرجس وطهرهم تطهيرا أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وفي الأرض قطع متجاورات وجنات من أعناب وفي الأرض قطع متجاورات وجنات من أعناب وزرع ونخيل ونخيل صنوان وغير صنوان يسقى بماء ونفضل بعضها على بعض في الأكل إن في ذلك لآيات لقوم يعقلون 
وإن تعجب فعجب قولهم أإذا كنا ترابا أإنا لفي خلق جديد أولئك الذين كفروا بربهم وأولئك الأغلال في عناقهم وأولئك أصحاب النار هم فيها خالدون صدق الله العلي العظيم In this verse in these two verses 4 and 5 there are references to geology to botany which is the science of plants and to other sciences some people ask is the holy quran of is the holy quran a book of science why does god does not speak about physics and chemistry and biology and astrology and astronomy this is not the job of the quran to explain these theories quran gives references to these sciences, to physics, to astronomy, astrology, to chemistry, to biology, to geology, to medicine sometimes. But Quran speaks in short references. Quran speaks in a coding language does not go into details. Why? Because this is not the job of the Quran to go into details. This is my job and your job, people's job. God says, I provided you with a tool. That tool is called aql, reason. Use your reason to discover what I have created for you. Use your aql. I provide you with encouragement. Ar-Rahmanu khalaq al-Rahmanu علم القرآن خلق الإنسان علمه البيان and we have given you intelligence reasoning we want you to, to discover these sciences these facts yes I speak about them I do speak why because I want you to know that God is aware of these things God does not only speak in this book about religion speaks about everything ما فرطنا في الكتاب من شيء we never missed anything. Ma'farratna means we never missed anything in this book. Everything is in this book, but not in details. Not in details. God speaks with a coding language, gives the headlines, and then he leaves the rest for me and you to discover and find out. Ar-Rahmanu allam al-Qur'an khalaq al-insan. Allah says here that we created the law and then we we, we, we introduced the law and then we created man. So which one was first, man or the law? The law. God introduced the law and then he created man. Why? So we do not live in a state of lawlessness. So even before your, before your arrival, before we arrive into this world, we see the law ready for us. Ready, we know what to do. We don't mess up. Ar-Rahmanu allam al-Qur'an first. He introduced the law. Khalaq al-Insan. Then he created man. And after that, allamahu al-bayan. He inspired him with reason. With logical reason. So when he speaks, he speaks out of knowledge and understanding. Allamahu al-bayan. So when he communicates, he says things that are right, not things that are wrong. When we speak to each other, we must incorporate logic, rationality, and we should not speak but the truth, nothing but the truth. We should not attack each other. 
Allamahu al-bayan. If we have bayan among us, if we incorporate bayan, we are not going to have conflict in our life. But if we put bayan aside, we speak nonsense, we attack each other, then definitely our li life is not going to be all right. وَفِي الْأَرْضِ قِطَعٌ مُتَجَاوِرَةٌ So number four, Allah says, ayah number four in Surah Al-Ra'd, وَفِي الْأَرْضِ قِطَعٌ مُتَجَاوِرَةٌ وَجَنَّاتٌ مِنْ أَعْنَابٍ وَزَرْعٌ وَنَخِيلٌ صِنْوَانٌ وَغَيْرُ صِنْوَانٍ يُسْقَى بِمَاءٍ وَاحِدٌ Upon the earth, there are <coughs> neighboring tracts, pieces of land next to each other. They look similar, but they are different. They look similar, they are neighbors. I'll come to this and explain how they are different from each other. Qita'un mutajawirat. Wajannat. And then, Jannat here is a reference to Jannatun min a'nab. Gardens of grapes, meaning vineyards. Wajannatun min a'nabin. Wazar'un wa nakhilun. Sown fields, zar'a. Wa nakhilun and date palms. وَنَخِيلٌ صِنْوَانٌ وَغَيْرُ صِنْوَانٌ Of shared root and not of shared root. يُسْقَى بِمَاءٍ وَاحِدٍ All of these are watered with one water. These lands, they are next to each other, but they are different in nature. They are different in nature. قِطَعٌ مُتَجَاوِرَةٌ Some of them are lush and green some of them are dry and barren some of them are fresh some of them are salty some of them are sweet others are bitter or sour they are next to each other the land is next to each other but they are different in nature they are different in nature. Therefore, the veget every vegetation requires a specific type of soil, specific element in that soil for the vegetation to grow. And therefore, <clears throat> each land is good for a specific type of vegetation or a fruit. And sometimes the fruit is different in nature and taste. Sometimes the banana, you buy banana from one country, it has a taste. From another country, another city, another village, it has another taste. Same thing with the citrus. Same thing with others. Some of them, they really have a strong smell, good smell, aroma. Some of them, they have good taste. Some of them, they don't. In America, the fruit has no taste and no smell, alhamdulillah. You buy them, you eat them. You just fill your stomach, but you don't enjoy. Because it's not organic. It's not organic. Neither the meat, neither the chicken, neither anything else. It's not organic. When we tamper with the soil, when we tamper with the environment, when we tamper with the weather, then this is the result. You don't enjoy eating the food. You don't. So... وَفِي الْأَرْضِ قِطَعٌ مُتَجَاوِرَاتٌ وَجَنَّاتٌ مِنْ أَعْنَابٍ وَزَرْعٌ وَنَخِيلٌ Palm trees, صِنْوَانٌ وَغَيْرُ صِنْوَانٌ Some of them, they have shared root. Some of them have separate root, not of shared root. But this is the key word here. تُسْقَى يُسْقَى بِمَاءٍ وَاحِدٍ All these things are watered by one water. Different things. But the supplier, supplier is one. The water is one. One water, but different seeds. And that applies to us. There is a metaphor here. In the Quran, there is tafsir and ta'wil. There is the surface meaning, and there is the hidden meaning. The surface meaning, God is speaking about fruit, food, vegetation. But where is the hidden meaning? The hidden meaning, it means it applies to you. Yusqa bima'in wahid. You see two brothers from one father, one mother. They live in the same house under the same roof, but they have two different characters. One of them is generous, the other is mean. One of them is courageous, the other is timid. One of them is believer, the other is non-believer. 
They come from one source. Yusqa bima'in wahid. One mother, one, one womb carried them. They came from the same sperm of the same father. Yusqa bima'in wahid. But they are different. People are different from each other. Even brothers and sisters in the one family, they have different characters. They eat the same food. They are raised by the same mother, same father, same house, same location. But they are different in their capabilities, in their characters, in their personalities. They are different. Yusqa bima in wahid. And also the scholars, theologians, they say this is a reference to God, to monotheism, Tawheedullah. That everything in this universe, whatever we, differences we have, at the end we go back to one source, and that source is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We come from Him. We have one creator. One creator of everything in this universe. How many things we have? Billions. But they go back to one creator. This universe has one source, one God, one leader, one sovereign. And that is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yusqa bima'in wahid. And then, وَنُفَضِّلُ بَعْضَهَا عَلَى بَعْضٍ فِي الْأُكُلِ Some of them, we favor over others in bounty. Some of them have more nutrition. Some types of food, they have no nutrition, no, no nutritional value, no nutrition. Some of them, they are full of nutrition. Some of them are more than the others. Same thing with the human beings. Some human beings, no nutrition, alhamdulillah. Only haykal. Allah says about some in the Quran, Surah Al-Munafiqoon, وَإِذَا رَأَيْتَهُمْ تُعْجِبُكَ أَجْسَامِهِمْ The physical structure, wow, very attractive. Half a kilo makeup on her face, you know, mashallah. 20 plastic surgery from the nose down to the toes. Nose, the toes. This is beautiful, yeah. Okay, but then no value, no nutrition. Inside is empty. Inside there is no manners. There is no good behavior. Same thing with men. No nutrition. They don't even have taste. They don't have benefit. Their jism, their bodies, physical structure are very profound. They are just like pieces of wood. They have no benefit in the society. See, sometimes you have two friends, two brothers. Two brothers, one of them is full of benefit to his family, to his community, to people around him. The other is useless, believe me. He's only good for recycling. Put him in the recycling bin. Two brothers have, two brothers. One of them dedicates his entire life to serve his family, his parents, full of goodness, full of generosity, full of humanity. The other is nothing. God says the same. What we do with the food, we do with the people. We favor. We have favored some above others in bounty. Then, Truly in that are signs for those who understand. Whenever you find this sentence at the end of any verse in the Quran, it means this verse, you have to reflect upon this verse. There are lessons to be drawn. There are morals in this verse. Don't just read the surface meaning, the external meaning. There is inner meaning, deeper meaning. You have to dive to be able to understand what God is telling me and you. You have to dive deep. Inna fi dalik. Whenever there is in, truly, verily, in that, in what I just said, God says, in what I have just said, la ayatin, signs, isharat, lessons, morals, li qawmin ya'qilun, only for those who understand, 
only those for those who are willing to understand because some people are not willing to understand they shut their ears they shut their eyes they shut their minds they are not willing to understand وَإِن تَعْجَبْ فَعَجَبٌ قَوْلُهُمْ And if you wonder, then wondrous is their saying. If someone is amazed and astonished, then you have to be astonished by what they say. What do they say? Who are they here? They, the non-believers, who are arguing with the Prophet ﷺ. They are arguing with the Prophet. God says, and if you wonder, then wonder us what they say. وَإِن تَعْجَبْ فَعَجَبٌ قَوْلُهُمْ What you are saying is normal, but what they are saying is not normal, is abnormal. What do they say? وَإِن تَعْجَبْ فَعَجَبٌ قَوْلُهُمْ أَإِذَا كُنَّا تُرَابًا أَإِنَّا لَفِي خَلْقٍ جَدِيدٍ When we are dust, after death, when we become... When we become dust and dirt, أَإِذَا كُنَّا تُرَابًا أَإِنَّا لَفِي خَلْقٍ جَدِيدٍ Shall we indeed be raised in new creation? Are we going to come back to life? God said, this is very wondrous what they say. What does God say in Surah Yasin? Chapter 36, verse Verse 81, وَضَرَبَ لَنَا مَثَلًا وَنَسِيَ خَلْقَهِ The guy came to the Prophet, he took a bone, a human bone, and he disintegrated the human bone. He said, Ya Muhammad, look at this bone, how I destroy it. أَتَزْعُمْ You claim that your Lord is going to bring this bone that I just destroyed. I made it dust. It, it comes back to creation. Are you kidding me, Muhammad? أَتَزْعُمْ أَنَّ رَبَّكْ يُحْيِي هَذِهِ الْعَظَامُ وَحْيَ رَمِينَ After I disintegrated this bone, demolished it, then it comes back to human being? Why do you lie to us? Allah gives a beautiful analogy. وَضَرَبَ لَنَا مَثَلًا But he forgot about himself. وَنَسِيَ خَلْقَهِ Where did you come from? You came from nothing. وَضَرَبَ لَنَا مَثَلًا وَنَسْيَ خَلْقَهِ قَالَ مَنْ يُحْيِي الْعِظَامَ وَحْيَ رَمِينَ Who is going to re-bring, recreate, restore these bones when they are completely disintegrated? وَحْيَ رَمِينَ قُلْ Say to him يُحْيِيهَا الَّذِي أَنْشَأَهَا أَوَّلَ مَرَّةِ The one who created them first time is going to recreate them again. Construction and reconstruction. If someone built this place then it is easy for him to remodel it and rebuild it. It's easy for him. The God who created this cosmos system. He cannot bring you back. Why he asked this question? Because he was ignorant. If he knows about science, he would not ask this question. If he knows about this cosmos system, he would not ask this question. He thinks that it is impossible for God to bring someone like him. God who's created the entire universe, cosmos system, the huge system, which is endless, endless. It has no end. He's not able to create humans again. Certain questions should not, not be asked because they are illogical. God says you, sh you cannot, you should not, if you understand what I am telling you, you should not understand, ask this question. You cannot go, can you go to a pilot who is a flying Dreamliner or 777 or, or, or Airbus 380 and you ask him this question, you tell him, pilot, captain, can you drive a car? He would laugh at you. You don't ask this question. Would you ask him this question? You don't. You have to respect yourself. 
You don't go to someone who built a skyscraper, 120 stories, 130 stories, and you tell him, can you build a single room, single apartment, to an architect, to an engineer? You don't ask him this question. You look at his wonder, and then you answer the question yourself. You don't have to go to him. We look at what God did for us in this universe. If we study science, if we know what is going on there, we don't ask these questions. But because people are unaware, when people are ignorant, they start wondering. Sometimes they ask questions, they know the answer, but because they are stubborn. Stubbornness is one of the spiritual and moral diseases that destroys the person. Inad destroys the person. Sometimes a teenager is stubborn, especially in this country. I always say God will send every mother in this country who raised a teenager, even one teenager, especially females, God is going to give her free visa to paradise immediately. Yes. Believe me. If you raise a teenager in this country, that's it. You are done. Go to paradise. Passport to paradise. Because if you know how, what it takes to deal with those teenagers in this country, especially girls and boys both. So if she's patient and she can raise them, paradise, Jannah, immediately. But sometimes this person who's a stubborn is not a teenager. He's not 17 or 18 or 19. He's an adult, but he does not respect his brain. He denies the existence of God. But if he looks at himself as a father in the family, he's the leader of the family. A family cannot exist without a leader, without a father. If he goes to school, can a school exist today without a principal? Have you ever seen a school in America or outside America without principal? Have you seen a, 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 a hospital without a CEO, a chairman, a president of the hospital, a director of the hospital? Have you seen a factory without someone in charge, without a boss? Have you seen an, a corporation in your life without CEO? Everywhere you go, there is a boss. Have you seen a city, a city without mayor? Impossible. Impossible. So how do you expect to see a universe without a Lord, without a caretaker, without a Rab? Does that exist? You are contradicting yourself. If you look at yourself and your society, you realize that this universe has a leader. Has a leader. It cannot develop by itself. It cannot even run by itself. It has mudabbir. It has a manager. Mudabbir. Every second of this universe requires that mudabbir. So don't disrespect your own self. When you say there is no Lord, I don't believe, where is the Lord? It means that you don't, you are disrespecting yourself. Because you admit that for every project, every institution, every place, including a small family, there is a leader, there is a boss, there is a director. In this mosque, do we have a director or not? Sometimes we have five directors, mashallah, not four. We have two many. Surplus. So we need, in every sphere of life, you need a director, mudabber, manager. You need. Otherwise, you cannot run the affairs. This universe cannot be left without mudabber. This sophisticated, complex universe cannot be left without mudabbar. أَوَلَيْسَ الَّذِي خَلَقَ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ بِقَادِرٍ عَلَىٰ أَنْ يَخْلَقَ مِثْلَهُمْ فَلَا وَهُوَ الْخَلَّاقُ الْعَلِيمُ إِنَّمَا أَمْرُهُ إِذَا أَرَادَ شَيْئًا أَنْ يَقُولَ لَهُ كُنْ فَيَكُونَ Don't wonder that God, how can God bring these bones back? God, if he wants something, أَمْرُهُ and once he wills something, he will say to it, be, and it will happen immediately. Immediately happens. 
فسبحان الذي بيده ملكوت كل شيء وإليه ترجعون. So this is the conclusion of أإذا كنا ترابا أإنا لفي خلق جديد Allah says they know the answer but they disbelieve out of arrogance and stubbornness. أولئك الذين كفروا بربهم Those are the people who disbelieve. It is they who disbelieve in their Lord. وأولئك الأغلال في أعناقهم They are going to be handcuffed through their necks. وأولئك أصحاب النار هم في أخالدون My friends, people choose the next path here in this life. We choose it, believe me. It's not an accident. Therefore, nobody is going to be surprised in that life. Before you die, you know where you're going to go. Before you die. Just like a student who goes for the finals and he himself knows before his teacher, before his mother, before his father, before anybody else. He knows about his grade. He's not going to be shocked, believe me. Yes, maybe he thinks that he gets A, but he gets B. But it's impossible that he expect to get A and he get F. It's impossible. If he says this to his mother, he's lying. He's lying. Don't believe him. Because you know what you did. You know. I know myself. I know where I'm going to go. We know. Of course we need God's help. We need God's Forgiveness, definitely. Everyone needs God's forgiveness on the day of judgment. But it's impossible. It is impossible for someone who spent his life disbelieving in God, doing injustice to people to expect that God is going to have a red carpet reception for him to paradise. Impossible. And it is impossible for someone who loved God. He did what he was able to do. He did his best. But of course, sometimes we have failures. We are humans to expect God to punish him because you know yourself. So the path, the visa for the path, we get it here. And we know it before we arrive there. There is no surprise. There is no surprise there. We decide which path we take. Allahumma khfar lil mu'minin wal mu'minat. والمسلمين والمسلمات الأحياء منهم والأموات تابع اللهم بيننا وبينهم بالخيرات إنك مجيب الدعوات إنك غافر الخطيئات إنك ماح السيئات وجاعلها حسنات إنك على كل شيء قدير إن شاء الله we see you Friday prayers tomorrow at 12 and then we have Saturday we have the Fatiha ceremony here from 3 to 5 for the mother-in-law of brother Dia Reza Mateen from 3 to 5 and then we have an Arabic session from 7 to 9 inshallah Saturday and Sunday we have the youth session which I'm going to be here at 6 p.m. Sunday inshallah أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم أما يجيب المضطر إذا دعاه ويكشف السوء أما يجيب المضطر إذا دعاه ويكشف السوء أمن يجيب المضطر إذا دعاه ويكشف السوء أمن يجيب المضطر إذا دعاه ويكشف السوء أمن يجيب المضطر إذا دعاه ويكشف السوء يا الله من على مرضانا بالشفاء والعافية تقبل منا هذا اليسير بلطفك وكرمك وعجل وعجل في فرج سيدنا ومولانا صاحب العصر والزمان وإلى أرواح المؤمنين والمؤمنات والشهداء ثواب الفاتحة مع الصلاة على محمد وآل محمد